let's get it. Whether we like it or not, conflicts run reality shows. They make reality shows what they are. If you didn't have one cast member arguing with, disagreeing with, or cussing out, or downright coming to a point where they're flipping over tables and losing their minds during the course of a reality show, you wouldn't have a show. There, can, there are countless number of shows that we can think about where the stars or cast members of said program came on and they wanted to have the kumbaya moments. They wanted to show the positive side of whatever crazy relationship that they are involved in. And subsequently, those shows have been canceled. When we look most recently at Sister Wives, one of the big two villains for Sister Wives were Cody Brown, Robin Brown. And the crazy part is, is that when the show came out, they couldn't figure out why so many people disliked them. Because in order for you to have a show, you have to have a villain. You have to have an antagonist. You have to have somebody to root for and you have to have somebody to root against. And with Cody and Robin, the situation pretty much wrote itself. You have an older guy who has long-standing relationships in an already made family. He leaves said family and moves over to his younger, quote-unquote, diesel model gene end quote wife who he finds more attractive who he thinks is the bee's knees that he wants to spend all his waking hours over there at the house no shame no shade that's who he fell in love with you know he can't be held back for his emotions <laughs> and that's where he wanted to be so that's where he went but for the longest time both he and robin have been vilified they've been drugged through the mud they've been raked over coals because people want their pound of flesh from the villain. And even as we move now, even before the tragedy that hit the Brown family, which I'm not going to get into, and I'm not pointing fingers on that situation. I don't want to talk about it. But before that tragedy occurred, both Cody and Robin trying to recreate their image, trying to move back into the light, trying to become popular characters once again on the reality show Sister Wives. That effort has gone largely into the fail column. <laughs> like they've been failing miserably at trying to come out of that that whole thing. And it's like boo hoo, boo boo, so sad, too bad, nobody cares. Because as far as most of the vo viewers are concerned, they're going to be the villains. So the true way that they can try to rehabilitate their image, or at least in my perspective, is for them to find a new villain. You see, they tried the, the look back and the talk back where they tried to explain everything and go back and tell the audience members, no, 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 you have it wrong, and nobody bought it. So what they need to do is they need to transplant their evilness, the, the attitudes that people have towards them, and put it on somebody else. And in my opinion, I think that that new candidate, whether purposely, whether intentionally from production, realizing this is what they have to do, whether it's something that uh, this particular person volunteered to do, because let's be honest, it would move them from a supporting cast member or somebody who just appears on the show to somebody who can now demand a check. The person I'm talking about is actually Tony, McKelty's husband. Why is Tony in such a prime position to be the villain of the show? If we think about it, Tony has a way in. He's not a part of the Sister Wife franchise. He kind of came in with a little bit of spice because the attitudes that he had, kind of the uh, male chauvinistic uh, mentality and positions that he was taking, some of the things that he was saying kind of rubbed people the wrong way. And it made people uh, question him. He started to mirror a lot of the things that Cody was doing. Cody went to uh, pick Robin's dress. Tony insisted that he pick McKelty's dress. And that he'd be completely involved with every step of the wedding. There's no surprise as far as he was concerned in his wedding. Right? Even when it came down to them purchasing the home or uh, them doing the wedding and who was going to pay for the wedding, there was a big controversy where he was like, oh, it's easy. All they have to do is mortgage their house and they could pay for the wedding. Oh, well, McKelty later went back <laughs> and I see what she was trying to say. She was saying that the reason Tony said that was one, she can't acknowledge, which I've always suspected, that TLC was paying for part of the wedding. 
I also take the position that even counter to that point, that TL, there's no way TLC would pay for a second wedding in the same season. There's no reason why they would do that. They already had one wedding for this season. Not to be a jerk about it, but in production, we already did that. Fonzie already jumped the shark in this particular episode. Why are we going back and trying to do it twice in a season? He already did the big jump. We already had the two be continued. Will he make it? Won't he make it? Episode. We already had that. We already had the big wedding with uh, Maddie's wedding. Why would we do it twice? So they, they're not going to pay for it. But even if they did pay for it, okay, fine. They were going to kick some money towards it. When... Tony had said, at least how McKelty described it, Tony was referring to you taking out a home equity loan versus you just throwing it on a credit card. The interest rate is going to be way lower on a home equity loan than it ever would be on a credit card. A credit card, you might as well just go ahead and sell the house <laughs> I mean, at that point because you're never going to catch up, especially if it's that ridiculous, like this, that over the top. So that's how they try to explain it, but it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Most recently, as I did in one of my previous videos, Tony had criticized Christine about the whole dress incident. And he's been, you know, coming after Christine and criticizing Christine heavily for a long time. Some of the fans have speculated the reason why Tony is going after Christine the way he's been going after her is because when it was first proposed that he was going to marry McKelty, she didn't jump up and run over and hug Tony and greet Tony with open arms. In fact, she wanted McKelty to slow down and wait and make sure she really understands who she's marrying, get to know the person that you're marrying, finish school, and have things in place for herself before she got married. And part of the reason why... People say that Tony, McKelty, and Robin are so close is because Robin was one of the first people to jump up and throw her arms around McKelty and Tony and welcome into the family. I put my push back to that argument is simply this. One, I understand where Christine is. Tony had said when he was talking about the dress thing that Christine might have been jealous and she might have been envious of that situation and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That speaks to Christine's experience in her relationship. If she is having trouble with her husband, Cody, Christine is having trouble with Cody at the moment and they're having difficulty seeing eye to eye. And when she first married Cody, she was so in love with Cody and things seemed so wonderful. And she was looking at her love with a youthful, hopeful, gleeful eye. But the time, age, maturity, real life circumstances, children, economic issues, other women coming down. All of a sudden she's having trouble with her husband and she questions whether she should have gotten married in the first place. She also questions because she's in a financial situation where she has to stay with this man. And what Christine theoretically could have been arguing is that one, you are 20 years old when you're talking about getting married. You have the rest of your life. Why rush to marry a guy that you've only known for about a year or less than a year? Why rush to do that? If you guys are in love, this relationship is built to last. Why not wait? Hold off. Make sure that you are compatible. Wait till you have a really good argument and you really decide whether you want to be with this person or not. Because anything less than a year, I don't see, unless something crazy happened, I don't even see you guys really having a face-off argument. And by face-off, I don't mean you facing each other. I mean, you take off the illusion or the representation that you have trying to present yourself as a good person. And you, the real you, takes a real position and you have an opposing view to the person you're in a relationship who is taking off their mask. And you're standing there, the real you is standing there arguing with the real them. And you guys are throwing it at each other and making decisions then you 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 start to figure out whether your relationship is built to last there's also a point when you look at robin's situation it's easy to support somebody else's child knowing something poor and this is no slight on robin it's just the reality of the situation you can jump up and say oh you guys are in love it's so amazing i hope that you guys oh i gotta be there i gotta be there include me on everything it's easy when it's somebody else's 20 year old daughter but we just saw in season, uh, was it 18, where Robin's oldest daughter, 
who is now 21, 22 years old, was standing there talking about she's about to get her first boyfriend and start going out for the first time with this first person. And she's 22 years old. And Robin insists that she focuses on school, that she not worry about getting married. That's her daughter. Her second eldest daughter, uh, Brianna, she's 20 years old. She's the exact same age as McKelty when she got married. Not when she was engaged or she let everybody know. When she married uh, Tony, she was 20 years old. So you have a situation where Robin isn't staying consistent across the board with everybody, making sure everybody rushes to find a soulmate and get married at 20 years old. In fact, Robin is taking the exact opposite position when she was standing out there talking to Mary and Aurora about Aurora getting involved with these relationships. You need to slow down and make sure you have your career set so that that way she's taking care of herself and she's not trapped in a relationship. Because even Robin understands that financially, if you're tied to somebody, you don't have a way out. You are trapped. And we can sit here and talk all day about traditional marriages and traditional weddings, but at the end of the day, you if you're living that your trad wife, trad husband, where the man goes out every day and he works and he's taking care of the family and she stays home, then if she stays home for 20 years to take care of the children that they have together and those children grow up and they hit their 18th birthday and that upon that child's 20th birthday, husband who's been working, who has 401k and who has work experience looks at his wife and says, you know what? This isn't working out. You need to pack your stuff. And I say you need to pack your stuff because you can't afford to be here. You don't have a job. You can't pay the mortgage. Because remember, we, you know, smart dude will take out a second loan on the house. <laughs> He'll take out two, three, put two, three mortgages on the house. There's no way she can afford that. And she's not getting that in alimony, no matter how much we pretend that that's the case. So you try to set these ladies up. And that's just the argument for it. Now, again, if the, if your thing is you want to stay home and be a home wife and you trust your husband, that's that's fine. But it's ironic to me that somebody who is in a like or similar situation when Robin, who has been divorced, says to her daughter that I want you to make sure that you have power and you're able to make decisions for yourself. And I want to empower you to be able to make those decisions. Even if you stay home, you still want to have that piece of paper from that college or university that can open a doorway for you to an opportunity. And I want to make sure you get that. And nothing is going to get in the way of you getting that, including love. So it's ironic she took that position. So when Tony sits there and he pretends like Robin was so ingratiating, was so so ingratiating to him coming into the family, we have to take that into account. Now, with all that being said, I would just simply say this: if to this is in fact what Tony is doing, or if Tony hasn't really thought about it, bruh, this is a great opportunity for you. The whole storyline between Cody and Robin is long in the tooth and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense moving forward. And as anybody who has talked about sister wives, they talked about getting rid of Robin and, and letting Cody and them go so that they can move on with the different shows. One of the built in uh, conflicts that you can have is with the son-in-law. And so if you want to have that second breath of life, this might be something that he wants to do. And maybe TLC is considering it. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys like the video, please share the video. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. Let a player know you like what I'm doing. I appreciate it. Don't forget this Sunday, I will be doing my book review of Becoming Sister Wives. It will be 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Sunday. Make sure you come in for the live. We're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks so much. Leave your take down below. This is my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality. And I'm out.